Barbara Kruger is going to be a feminist artist who's working with specific formats that she picks up as a commercial artist. She will be the art director of Mademoiselle magazine in the late 1960s, and she incorporates these layout techniques into a lot of her work. She will also, very much like Cindy Sherman before her, look at the idea of the male gaze. Now, let me point out that art is typically created, and much a lot of the media is typically created for the masculine gaze or the male gaze. In other words, when we look at an image, we're looking at from a male perspective. And just a reminder... Female gaze is an issue that we've come across before. So the female gaze refers to the perspective a female artist brings to a work that may be different from the male's view. And here we see it in these two paintings I believe I've shown you in the past. The one on the lower left by a male artist depicting this woman as sort of giving herself over to the viewer, whereas the one on the right by a female artist is depicting a woman in a much more natural pose. She's not trying to show her body to the viewer. Rather, she's trying to protect certain elements of her body in a self-conscious way, which is probably more realistic in the long term. And we've dealt with these things in the past when we talked about Gentileschi and her painting of Judith beheading Holofernes. So, when we look at Kruger's work, she's going to take that advertising background and apply it to ideas of the male gaze, creating these massive billboard-like images that are going to stand out. They're going to have very fast, very simple messages that are very deep, using those ideas from advertising that you need to have a message that gets across very, very quickly to the viewer, or the viewer will walk away. Now, the piece we're looking at is your gaze hits the side of my face. And in this piece, what we see is the words, the typography, your gaze hits the side of my face. And we see this image of a woman sculpted, sort of a bust head, maybe an Art Deco style bust head. So we've got the photograph of this beautiful sculpted head overlaid with the typography. The words cannot be taken in with a single glance. This is a massive piece. It's about four foot by six foot. So it becomes an exercise in standing in front of it and reading down the side of the work. And this is important. The longer that I can hold you, the more message I can get across. So what you get is this cumulative quality that delays understanding and intensifies meaning. Kruger's use of text in her work is significant. Many cultural theorists have asserted that language is one of the most powerful vehicles for internalizing stereotypes and conditioning roles. So she's combining these two elements. And it should be pointed out that this isn't actually a person. It's a sculpture. It is an idealization of the female form. And then you have that idea of gaze. Your gaze hits the side of my face. It's passive. It's a woman who isn't looking at us. It is a woman who is passively viewed. And this is an uncomfortable position to be in, right? We've all been in a setting where we've been passively viewed. Maybe you've been going through a test and the proctor is watching what you're doing. Maybe uh, you were photographed when you didn't want to be. Maybe someone in a bar is looking at you and you can't stop them from doing that. It's a loss of control. But it's also getting at that idea of gaze. Your gaze hits the side of my face. It's not as powerful if your gaze is a female gaze. But yet, as the male gaze, this is exactly what we tend to see in the media. And this is exactly what Kruger's trying to bring up. What she's doing is she's trying to reverse the power relationship between the male observer and the observed woman by taking the woman to be viewed and making her a statue, making her something that cannot actually be obtained because, of course, she isn't real. 
And that reversal is going to be powerful. No matter how much you look at a statue, it's never going to react. Unless maybe your name is Pygmalion. So when we look at it, it creates a very powerful image and a very powerful message that takes a minute to get it get across but when it comes across it starts that conversation so we see ideas of conceptual art here the idea of the conversation we see ideas of feminist art here looking at the male versus female gaze we see ideas of advertising ideas of so-called fast art which we're going to see more of as we move forward 